Hey, sorry hey, about that. How's it going? Good. You? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Just actually oh. uh, putting in the Diamond Orders, which feature. Uh, Weren't they supposed to go in yesterday? Uh, no, no, they actually extended it because of all the inclement weather. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I know in Canada it's just called winter, but yeah, yeah. down south in America, people were. I mean, oh, he's Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> oh boy, that changes everything. Oh yeah. Game changer. I love so, Canadian. so wait, inclement weather stops you from filling out a form. I, I, you should know that. Uh, like I, we have a friend, Ben. Ben just moved to Georgia. Yeah, we have and a friend he's... in the south, and they got an well, inch of snow, yeah. and yeah. school has been closed for three days. <laughs> hey, yeah. if I was yeah. a kid, that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. They're so, like, oh yeah. my god, the world's in here. So gosh, apparently, snow. Diamond is in Mississippi, and they're all like, they don't know what to do with snow. Yeah. And a bunch of comic shops got their stuff late and delayed. So I don't know, but that's why it's been delayed. They're All letting right. us have more time. But uh, I'm going to pronounce Captara, your new song. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that sounds about right. You, Captara. All right. Yeah. Uh, we put the order in today. We're going we're gonna to do pretty well. You just better not screw Five us over copies. by writing something boring. Five copies? Five would be, like, big for us. We, we're going We're going three. No. <laughs> um, so... The weird thing to me is I was almost sure Howard was originally scheduled to be out next week. Yeah, it was. It was. Okay, good. I yeah, it was. Wanna, yeah. That's a past yeah. tense. Yeah, well, I, it's now coming I, out. I, I, oh, forgot to, I forgot to write it. Life happens. <laughs> you and Neil, you're up there with Neil Gaiman then. Yeah. That, is, yeah. that was his jumping on the grenade for uh, J.H. Williams. That was wonderful with uh, the new yeah. Sandman. Is that, did he actually say that? Yeah, did he, he said, forgot oh, to write I've it? been so busy touring, I forgot to write the issues. <laughs> Yeah. So bullshit. Yeah, well, he wanted. No J. H. Williams was getting a lot of hate. What? You're so slow that the book's four four months delayed. Here so, I know George R. R. Martin. Yeah, it's so. been like ten years since anything Sandman came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the, the Overture series. Is this new thing? Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it was. You can very wait strange. a little bit longer. Well, it's like I mean I don't know if you are up to date with this, but like this non-player comic is coming back after two years. The second issue is coming out. Well, it's non-player. It was it was this one of these big sensations when issue number one hit. Okay. Uh, everyone was like, "Oh, this is the next best thing, super in depth." And then two years and nothing came out. Ooh, what did uh, it come Nate, out from? Nate Sim Simmons. Sim I don't remember. It was before I owned the shop that when it came out. My shop's been yeah. open for two years, and the first issue came out before I opened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Man. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the ways. Com Comics are hard work. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Especially now, um, we're, we were going to focus heavily on Howard. No, I have... This, but you have something first? No, I've, no I've got very important, hard-hitting questions about Howard, but All right. continue. Um, All right. But also, obviously, the announcement yesterday is going to end up being discussed a little bit. About, what would happen? Uh, Kelly Sue and Matt's new production company. What's this? <laughs> what? Your what? sex criminals TV show, which is oh my the, god! You know, that I love the tell headlines. Me anything. I'm really nervous about this. I'll be honest. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that Chip is nervous. Please tell me you guys are going to at least license Fat Bottom Girls for the soundtrack. Um. Yeah, people keep asking me that. I don't know how they're going to get around that. Like, it's kind <laughs> of funnier to not have it. Yeah, it would be a great just a silent moment with like. I, I don't know if the, who's going to Just have the video playing in the background on silent on a TV at a bar. No, well, I would assume the best would be if Matt actually did voice to voiceover. He did a cover yeah. up. While oh, she's yeah. singing, she's going. And and he's you just hear Matt talking about you trying never make to that license. facial gesture again. That'd be great. That thing, that thing was so down to the wire. Like, <laughs> we had two sets of lawyers on it. <laughs> well. And, I, and like, I had, like, the actual text was underneath there. And it was at the printer, and I was just waiting to turn that layer off so we could <laughs> reveal the lyrics. We were so upset at the time that they didn't I get back. I like it better. Yeah, I think most no, people... No, no, it turned out better, but yeah. Uh, I have a lot of customers who don't believe the story. They, no, like... it's, it's totally true. Matt's lawyer uh, tried to get it approved uh, for the issues, and then when that didn't happen in time, I got my lawyer to try it for the trade. And she got so far as to get it on... Brian May's desk. Well, All I know is there was a copy of issue three on Brian May's desk. <laughs> and that's as far as it got. Yeah, well, that would have yeah. been good support. That would have been a nice blurb on volume two. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing a little shade there. Uh, well, volume two has some, has some really nice blurbs. I'm like, super mad because the car was too dark and I couldn't read volume two on the yeah, way here. She's not. <laughs> You're not caught up? Today, yeah. 
But feel free to spoil me. Yeah, she's she's fine. Turns with out they're both racists. <laughs> yeah, but what you I mean? have I have a big question about volume two. It's very clear, and you guys talked about it a lot when the book blew up. That yeah. you didn't expect the second arc. Oh. Yeah. No. And not we didn't, ex we didn't expect the first arc. <laughs> Well, that's like legitimately. No, I mean, there's a lot going on in comics like that. I, I just saw an interview with G. Willow Wilson on Ms. Marvel. Okay, and she's yeah. talking about they signed up for six issues and no one involved thought it was going to get more than that. No, no. Yeah. It's just, yeah, like, it's, it's crazy. It's amazing. And that, uh, that issue, when you come back, he, Matt says it's very heavily his life. The, a lot of he, stuff he dealt with. Yeah, yeah, between the period between issue five and issue six, I think Matt, uh, yeah, Matt started writing a bit more personally, and there was such a gap between those two issues right. that I think he maybe kind of started to overthink it a little bit, and... Well, that's uh, what I was going to say, is you guys seem to hit back, you hit the balance again in issue eight. How does eight. one even hit personal issues here? Like, I'm sorry, yes, I understand when I come, I stop time, but I try not to let that affect my personal life and my Well, that's what I'm work. saying, is you're not you up know, to date. You know what? You should try and read volume two. Yeah, before you we should try to read volume two. Right now, I'll do it on the podcast. Don't fuck with me. I've done okay, it Okay, we will do the Howard five. stuff while I go get it. Yes, okay, so I'm going to lead off of my really important, hard-hitting Howard the Duck questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, how much... Is he based on an actual duck? Because actual ducks have corkscrew penises and are prone to necrophilia. This is this is a uh, this is the thing that I'm trying to figure out a way to weave it into the story. <laughs> yes. and, such, and I do have an idea in mind. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, in which I can, at the very least, get corkscrew penis into the uh, into the comic. Well, I mean, so that's... There's, there's definitely, these are important issues, and I understand that. And I knew that was going to be your first question, because <laughs> you were far too eager. Well, we had, so, uh, had Facebook... Sort of penis is a relevant topic in my life, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Penises same are here. sex criminals. I draw them every day. Yes, I, I mean, he, that, that He's man. literally Riley grown up. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> Riley hopes so. <laughs> Did you see the art he gave me for my birthday? Uh, Riley, yeah. Yeah, with the yeah. fucking dildo lamps. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it was something special. Um, we had uh, our friend Colin asked if there will be duck tits as well as penises in Harry. I was, I was thinking about duck tits today. <laughs> I was I was going for a walk because, like, when the Howard news was announced, a friend of mine immediately sent me a screen grab of Howard the Duck the movie featuring duck tits, and I almost completely forgot about it, and it makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> for ducks to have uh yeah a, well that's i mean that's the this classic, man doesn't have a penis that's the classic oh yeah yeah. there's yeah there's yeah. That he's a doll. this is so we're gonna have a live reading of volume two while, yeah, while great, we talk great. about Howard people the love that on a podcast <laughs> our podcast is uh is not Free about form. being loved if it was we would try to be more pleasant i think <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're really um not. yeah so i was thinking about because there there is definitely opportunity <laughs> for duck uh breasts well, so that leads to my actually, I don't know, hard-hitting question, but mm. um, Steve Gerber has said that that whole duck world that he comes from that later appeared when he wasn't writing yeah, yeah. is not canon. Yeah. How are you dealing with, with the, those issues? Gerber's Howard versus Marvel's Howard, Destroyer Duck. For those of our listeners who don't know the history of Howard the Duck, yeah. uh, Steve Gerber did an unofficial crossover in a Howard the Duck series where, in his opinion... He moved Howard to Image Comics. Yeah, yeah. As Destroyer Duck, and it's a clone of Howard. It's the best stunt, I think, that's ever been pulled in yeah, comics. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> he was writing, like, Marvel Team Up and Destroyer Duck, and he did, like, an unofficial crossover and totally kidnapped Howard and dyed him a different color. Right, and so is your Howard canonically, canonically the clone? Are you keeping yes. Gerber's plot? Yes. Yeah. Oh, even yeah, though yeah, they, Even sure. though Gerber himself threw it out when he later did the other miniseries. Um, Gerber, uh, was brilliant to do that and it's helped me immeasurably because the idea of living up to the Gerber's original. character yeah. is just, it's impossible. And I know I'm already kind of setting myself up for failure because like there's going to be a contingent of people that would be upset if it was too Gerberish, and people that would be upset if it wasn't Gerberish enough. Right. Um, so I can kind of wash my hands of it a little bit and say, well, it's not actually Howard. <laughs> so we're... We're totally safe here. Right. Well, that, that's very safe. smart. And I was actually, we discussed this when we announced we were having you. 
I got a stack of comics when I was about 10 years old, and in it yeah. were some epics. Okay. And there was some Gerber, Colin, Cologne, I don't know how to... Uh, Gene Colin? Yeah, yeah, Gene Colin. Yeah, yeah. yeah because Ernie, uh, Ernie Colin, it's yeah. pronounced it very differently, so I always get confused. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know how... I remember that was the first drawn naked breast I ever saw mm. in that book, and I'm going... Oh, Howard, you know, I'm like, Howard, I guess he's sort of Donald the Duck. And then I'm like, oh, he's smoking. And I'm like, and now he's naked in bed with this lady. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how I feel. I think you and I had the same first <laughs> illustrated breast story. <laughs> there we go. That's, Look at that. That was, that was my first time seeing ass shingles. Really? Your first? <laughs> I've seen a lot of butts in my day. I am a booty connoisseur, but I've never seen shingles on a buttock. Thank you. Thank you, Chip. Hey, I feel I'm like we've had a special moment here. Yeah. So the the Duck World thing, um, like I've been reading up uh, on the Gerber stuff more, and uh, and I'm finding myself aligning with him a bit, maybe too much. Like Duck World now kind of gets me angry a yeah, little well, bit. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Marvel's very open, it seems now, to letting people explore a character and do stuff, but you're taking on a character with massive creator right contentions attached to it yeah uh kind of i mean there are definitely at least there was kind of a day in court for howard yeah. you know and there was a deal that was reached so i feel a bit more comfortable with the fact that the creator is no longer with us and there was a deal reached with marvel right. you're not writing uh, angela yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah she's an issue too but anyways <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, but I still feel like this weird defensiveness to protect Gerber's intention. And so Duckworld is like, as soon as like uh, I found out what Secret Wars uh, huh, right. was coming along, I guess, uh, I think they're, they're going to end up doing some sort of like Howard thing that I'm not involved with. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's the IP, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of hoping at some point during Secret Wars, like, Duck Roll gets destroyed, but I don't think that's how that works. Well, I mean, that's, that's what the other thing is, that really interestingly, is Gerber, I mean, to many people have discussed this, he was way ahead of his time. Oh, yeah. Um, and what he was doing in the original Howard, the absurd, like, absurdism with a capital A mm -hmm. of Howard, you're, I mean, Matt did a lot of that in Hawkeye. Um, Alice Pat's doing that over in uh, Secret Avengers. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot. Is this new Howard going to capture that same absurdist quality, or is this a little bit more like the later Howards that they did, more in the continuity of Marvel? Um, I'm trying to make it Howard in the Marvel Universe, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, the the main one being that I'm assuming I'm going to get fired after issue four. Well, but yeah, but you assumed that on your last job, and look what happened. That's true, but I think <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's there's actually people above me on, on this job oh, that could, could fire me, um, and so my instinct is just to do and write the characters that I've always wanted to write. So I'm like I'm shoehorning them all in, and like by giving Howard like a job of private investigator and relocating him to New York, um, I'm kind of opening it up for that. So is now is Beverly around? No, 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 not uh, not at first. Anyways, I got plans coming well, down mean, the that's, road. Yeah, it's be. I, I think throwing her in there with all that history would be a lot to start with. Well, it's also it's also yeah, it's also kind of my Gerber thing too because I think he had a point where he wanted to remove her, and he did in the comic, like remove her from the scene for a while. I think he kind of grew tired of Beverly for a little bit, and uh, and I kind of wanted a bit of a fresh start and. You know, the, the problems with characters like this where uh, so much time goes by, but you still have to retain the core of the character. And if the core of the character is, oh, I'm, this, I'm out of place in this world. Right, in a world he never made. Yeah, yeah. Right, like, was... I've changed the tagline to, like, in a world he's grown accustomed to. <laughs> because that's what happens. Like, well, and by mean, putting that's... him in New York, he becomes less strange because there's so much happening. Oh, my God. So what I've had to do is I've had to give him... Because the core of all of that is his loneliness. Right. Like, he just has kind of an uh, intrinsic loneliness to the character. And to kind of maintain that, I had to kind of take Beverly away for a while. So, that's fair enough. So he's lonely, yeah. I've given this too much thought, probably. No, I, th I know. I mean, like, that's that, and that's the really interesting thing. 
I, you know, people come in here a lot who we, we don't really, I don't want to say we don't cater to, but the majority of our customers are not comic fans, as it were. Yeah. Uh, that's why that's why we move so much image. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. They, they're, they, they're just readers. They're, yeah, they're they readers. Exactly. I was just having a discussion. The comic fans have this inordinate attachment to their own attachment mm -hmm. to the characters or companies or whatever. And yeah. readers just read good stories. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of them, when I say, oh, and Howard Duck's coming back, they'll say, oh, what else is, you know, the sex criminals guys doing? So I'll go, well, Matt's doing this and this and this and this, and Chip's doing Howard the Duck, and he's got his own thing coming out from Image. And they go, Howard the Duck? Like that movie? It's you're, exactly like the movie. Yeah, well, I'm saying you're coming, you're facing a lot of people who know you through sex criminals, and the yeah. only thing they know from Howard the Duck is the film. Yeah, so there's nowhere to go but up. Right. Like, are you even Perfect. referencing the film to sort of give them an in? John Lithgow make an appearance or something? No, it's funny. Like, when, uh, like the way the Howard thing happened was um, the editor, I, I did, like, an original Sins two-page oh, yeah, thing yeah. for him. Where you're the, where, where you, you... Yeah, where the, I'm in it. <laughs> you, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, again, this is me being a super, super comic nerd, but I thought of the end of Cerebus where Dave Sim is actually writing down the notes of Cerebus reading okay. the Torah. But that's, like, I'm probably the only person in the world who thought that. Yeah, yeah. That You're when, Jewish. No, because I read to the end of Cerebus, you know, me and a dozen other people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the whole dozen of us thought the same thing when we were Yeah. So, in, anyway, so uh, Will asked me if I had any ideas for Howard, and I, I was like, yeah, sure, and I, I gave a pitch, and uh, pitch was approved and kind of made its way along, and then... Um, and then it became pretty clear that they they didn't want a sequel to the movie, obviously, but they kind of wanted a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy because he shows up at the end. Right, they just And wanted... they're like, there's the assumption that people will pick up the book to find out what that duck's about, which I don't really yeah, buy. That's... But I'm more than happy to put Rocket Raccoon in a comic if it's oh, going to help. Yeah. And I really love writing the character. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a sequel to Howard, but it's a, it's strangely enough a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, so so that's why I, no, I mean because I really I've had a lot of people say and and then the you know the more closer to comic fan people go oh because they know he was a character but they haven't read the books they go oh he was just in Guardians so yeah. that's Marvel's thinking yeah Is oh that, yeah that yeah will, yeah 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 I they'll, can hear they'll that capitalize connection. on anything. Well, speaking of capitalizing, you get for Howard's issue two, you're getting a whole Marvel month of Howard, the What the Duck variant. Yeah, it's funny because that's that came about because I did the variant cover for issue two, which was like the kind of political button. Right, 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 right. My jacket, and I was trying to come up with slogans, and I came up with like "What the duck," and, and I guess stuff. Marvel marketing was like, "Let's roll with it." Right. Well, I mean, uh, Scott Snyder once told me the story with uh, Zero Year that happened okay. at DC after the New Fifty Two, like issue yeah. twenty five. He that was the name of his Batman storyline from a while back. Okay. And DC editorial came. They said we'd like to do these zero issues for everyone where Batman shows up. And he was like, oh, "What? No, no, this is my. St Don't do this to people. Yeah. Why would you do this?" And then he started getting emails from his fellow writers going, um, "I want to do this. We need to explain the origin of my character because the New Fifty Two is the New Fifty Two. Yeah, and yeah. We need to go back and explain some things. Could you please do this?" And he went. I don't want Batman showing up in all your books. I don't like, he's like, that's nothing to do with me. I write the yeah. one Batman book. So in the end up, DC did a whole zero year thing where it's just their origin. Some have Batman, some don't. But yeah. your Howard thing is just covers. He's not going to be making it. Just covers. Uh, we were able to get a Howard cameo in She-Hulk. You've been the last uh, issue? Yeah, the last issue. I'm, like I'm behind when... on my reading. <laughs> oh, sorry. A yeah, spoiler. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm, I work in a comic shop and behind in my reading. It's Listen. well because when I knew I was going to set up uh, Howard as a private investigator, I I loved the uh, the current run of She Hulk. So yeah, I said uh, we should have him in that building. Oh, and, right. That uh, building is that building. I assumed was going to end up sh appearing in more places in the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's great. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. And so. Uh, I put it in the script, and they ran it past Charles, and he was totally on board, and he said, oh, yeah, I'll try and sneak Howard in. <laughs> Just, like, peeking through a door. Issue 12, yeah, and that's essentially uh, I'll what happened. It. I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, you'll get she there. She just You'll had to there. put sex criminals down for some reason. I just, I just watched a man with a fucking dildo saber. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is amazing. It's oh, fun to draw. It's fun to draw. You hit me with a dildo. Are you, uh, are you doing, like, 
layouts or roughs at all for Joe on Howard, or you just no, write scripts? No, no. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm writing the script as open as I can because uh, he's yeah, he's, he's a great talent, man. He's he's a <laughs> humongous talent, and uh, I don't want to put my artistic sensibility onto it. You know, like oh, it's a bit I of a mean, tricky thing, like. You know, because I have an idea in my head, and no matter what, like it's going to be different coming back from Joe. So I kind of want to keep it as open as possible, so the image in my head isn't concrete. So I have this thing where it's like, oh yeah, this happens, and if I suggest an angle or something, it would feel weird. So I just want to like make sure this character does this, and we're good. <laughs> does this now? Does your writing career mean you're going to be doing a lot less drawing, like besides for Sex Criminals? Like you won't be doing little fill-ins and whatever Secret Wars anthology or whatever like he did uh, yeah I mean I wasn't really doing anything else before um, like I did that two page thing for Marvel but besides got that a like, of covers coming out and covers yeah like yeah because covers are... right now I'm a little upset <laughs> I'm a little flustered because he stopped shitting in the plant I'm really upset about this well so but you, did you that means you finished the first issue I got a chapter eight Okay, so you, and I, I was like, I need, to, I need to step back because I just watched a fucking two grown ass men brawling with fucking dongs. It's yeah, everything I yeah. ever wanted in life. I'm surprised you're not like more excited and want to read more. No, I have to take a moment to process what <laughs> yeah, I just read. You got to process the, the dong fight. I'm also like, listening to you talk about Howard the Duck. I'm like, no, we have more important things to talk about. Well, this is this is what's interesting about the beginning of that Six Criminals volume. It went so dark. I was just like, I was yeah. a little like, actually, like, I understand why I went there. I'm like, wow, this is this is not. This isn't funny dong jokes anymore, but they're back. Oh, no, I, yeah, I was super worried. You like, right, no, when I Matt mean, sent me the script for issue six because there was such a big break and um, we'd hit that point where it had taken off and taken off uh, really there was like, like insane like pressure on Matt. Scary. And so when I got the script for issue six, I was just like, I don't know how people are going to take this. Like, this is not really what they signed up for, but it turned out great. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I had a lot of customers go, this is really not why I read sex criminals. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they, but they gave, but you guys got so much trust out of them in those first yeah. five issues that they waited till seven. The hilarity kicks in a little in seven and then eight and nine really just get back on track, I think. Well, I mean, yeah, really, yeah. Like one time I creeped so hard I saw the bed sheets move. That was pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> there you go. At the same yeah. time, like reading this, like, yes, I read sex criminals because it's silly. It's ridiculously silly. But yeah. at the same time, as someone who's gone through a lot of, like, the depression and anxiety thing, I appreciate that this is, like, yes, it's not just completely shallow. It's not completely superficial. Like, there is actual depth to these characters beyond when I come, time stops, bye. Yeah, I mean, if it were hey, up to me, hey, it would... The, when it would... I come, time stops, that pitch, that sells a shitload of these traits. So don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't diss... You, you, know? Know, if that, you know, if this <laughs> was true, I might actually, like, fucking get be productive in my life. If you could... Stop if I could stop time and go do other shit, like, I might actually fucking finish work. Yeah, you do a lot of stuff after you come, right? I you really get a lot of stuff done normally. Yeah, I go get Taco Bell when I sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you could do it, you could steal the Taco Bell. Okay, so we're Good. actually, I'm going to fucking completely take over the reins here, and we're switching. She's the more interesting one anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you, I got it. He talks shop a lot, I talk shop when it's to shot him. You talk shit, I talk shop. I talk shit. Um, shop so shit. So, we have some... Interesting customer questions, listener questions. Listener fuck questions. Call them. Yeah, Jenny doesn't talk too much, does she? No. Anyway. Um, so, first question. Most of these are from the same person, actually. She was very enthusiastic. Oh, boy. Um, pizza or cheeseburgers? Um, uh, it, oh, uh, I had both today. <laughs> if you had You're my to hero. pick one. Uh, it would have to be pizza. Okay. Yeah. What kind of pizza? What toppings? That's not in the question. Shut up. It's uh. my own knowledge. Yeah, it's not in the question. <laughs> it's my question move now. On, this is my on. time. Um, I'll, I will do anything with a pizza except for pineapple. I think that's insane, putting fruit on a pizza. That makes no sense. Might as well just throw we cherries, and, about this a few cherries and apples on pizza. No, are great. No, I, yes. Or melon. What, and raisins? Let's throw some raisins on it. It's, it's, actually, it's actually my national shame because Hawaiian pizza was invented in Canada. Yes. Yes, because it takes a Canadian brain to be like, yeah. what? This I had seven Molsons. I'm gonna put some, some yeah. fucking pineapple on there. Yeah, Windsor, that Ontario. That was a lie. Well, we already know. No, it's true. You look it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I got more. more. An abomination. <laughs> Hawaiian <laughs> you know pizza what? would be like spam. I'm gonna. 
I'm a southern girl, and I don't even like that shit. Okay, so we're gonna skip the second question. We're saving that to for the end because that's much heavier. Yeah, that's a heavy question. Um, yeah. what is your favorite type slash color of undergarments? Bonus points for brands. Uh, most of the things I buy are pink, hot pink. Uh, your, but your shirts like salmon. I hope you're My shirts, it's right pink. Now. I mean, it's just checkered pink. So like, if you get really close to the checker, it's like pink. I don't know why I'm getting close. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, the hot, hot pink. And the uh, brand brand doesn't matter to me. I like the boxer briefs. Oh. Boxer you do seem like a boxer brief guy, like casual but not too sloppy. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the thing. Like if with the with just the briefs, it's just it's it's too it's too containing. I like I like I like my stuff to be able to snake down the leg a little bit, but not like never had that problem. Not push out into the Shut world. Up, shrimp dick. Yeah. yeah uh, who is your show business crush? Matt Fraction. <laughs> <laughs> I oh was, my god did you read deadline hollywood yesterday oh my oh, god. he's so hot right now That's, he is blowing up the best question and you can pass this on wait to matt and kelsey was i had someone go what's with those two they're doing a production company together like is there a thing i'm like they're married. there's a lot of things they have children and they went oh Dude, that explains so much. And I'm like, there you go. Dude, wow, way to be way to be really out there. To be fair, um, people ship you and your stock guy. So the best, uh, I got a, a Facebook message today from a guy who runs a convention, some Northeast convention. Give me name, uh, name and shame. No, shush. Then you know if I'm going. Um, <laughs> and he 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 was like, oh, I'd love to invite you to the show. You and your wife Kelly Sue. I'm like, ah, well, I'm not <laughs> married to her, but I'll. If you want to invite talk to my wife, yourself. Matt. And <laughs> yeah. I let him do his wife, Mary. Yeah. Kelly wow. said, wow, I just fucked that up. No one heard that. Bye. Yeah, I, I, I was going to ignore it. Um, uh, under the bridge. Okay, so let's get heavy here. This is, yeah, this All is right. intense. <clears throat> this is actually relevant to my interest anyway. What are your thoughts on gender identity? What are my thoughts on gender identity? Yeah. To, all right, here's a full verbatim question. Is it a sliding, yeah, yeah. swirling, ethereal, fluid, changing our state or places in the world, or is it set in stone piece of our personal narrative? Um, it's set in stone in the sense that what you are is what you are. Like, like not necessarily how you're born, but however you are inside. Like, I don't think it's fluid in the sense that, like, I don't think so. No one just decides to change, okay. but they reveal themselves as they grow older. Like I have friends who are trans, and I never think that they went from male to female. I think they've always been female. Right. Like yeah. that's set in stone, but it's set in stone yes. within. Well, I mean, we don't know what Jenny was looking for when she. Well, asked no, the no, that was that was one of those questions. Like, I'm either gonna love this guy or I'm gonna hate him. So let's go ahead and get it out there now. So Shades we can save of Anthony pain. Johnson. Oh, and Anthony <laughs> Johnson can go fucking gargle a. Fucking ton of cocks. What did what did he do? Poor Anthony. Poor Anthony. <laughs> Let me explain this. Shut uh, up. No, no, you're actually. No, no, no. Okay, insane. no, no. This you're is a crazy this person. is the neutral one. This is my retail mode. Okay. Okay. So, right. unless you were living under a rock, you're fully aware of GamerGate. Yeah, yeah. Anthony to proceeded to try and tell me how I should feel as a woman about GamerGate. See, that's not what happened. It's essentially what happened. But, no, he blew up on me when I asked him about his opinions on it. He claimed that men are evil and fucking bully the shit out of women in gaming. That's what it was. That's close. And he also true. no, he also said that white knights don't exist. So I was just like, proceeded to set a copy of Umbral on fire. Yeah, she, she's like, <laughs> fuck this dude. Yeah, it's really. Oh, it's really that doesn't bad. sound like Anthony. No, Anthony. What happened was, was she, she. No, he isn't. You sandbagged him. He, I tea bagged him. <laughs> you wish you did. Um, and she said. What are your feelings on Gamergate and ethics and journalism? And he freaked and the he fuck went, out. Oh, all this shit. Oh, it's disgusting. They're abusing this poor woman. And she's on the other side. I'm very time. pro Gamergate. All right. Yeah. So she went, and he thought that he wasn't going strong enough. I think. So, so he, he decided. Kept going. He decided to make it worse. Like men are fuck. Men in gaming are trash. They're this. They're that. And I'm like this poor innocent woman. Blah blah blah. And <laughs> she just. She actually controls herself much better than you I thought. You could feel the entire table <laughs> vibrating from my anger. <laughs> Thank God that episode has the bad audio, so we don't suggest people listen to it anyway. Sayonara. <laughs> it was fucker. early in the in the run. Um, on that thought, how do you feel about ethics in game journalism? Uh, well, I'm uh, my background is newspapers. Oh, so no ethics at all. No, so he, he's on my <laughs> team. Get out of here. No, no, I'm, I'm no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be because I, this. Yeah, okay, I, we'll change the subject. Because I've been in newspapers for like 13, 14 years, and I've seen how kind of entertainment journalism works. Like, you 
like there's clearly like problems within oh yeah game journalism and entertainment journalism there's problems in like news straight news journalism i'm i'm uh, loving is that with the rise of social media Literally every headline I see has the word allegedly and reportedly in it now. Hypothetically speaking. It's all like, man allegedly kills three people and blah, blah, blah. Well, oh, but you've, you've always had to. Man allegedly beats his wife. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, you've always had to do that. Like, I, from the first when, stories I did in a newspaper, well, you had to do In it. newspapers, well, but no, in social media no, for No, but they have to because, because the internet counts as the same thing as traditional media in regards to defamation of character. It's a legal standing. Yeah. Well, I just but, noticed... But yeah, but last... it's... Yeah. I don't, uh, yeah. That's the long short of it. It's basically so you don't... Include. I just noticed in the last two or three years, there's a lot more of that. Man, allegedly... Uh, of the al word allegedly and reportedly right in the headline. Alleged than, comic artist allegedly beats his alleged wife. Stop saying that. I know! You're, this is another one of her... I really, I really am upset with the lack of information on a rock-up church. Right. I want to know what happened. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, he just speared off the... He just, he just fucked right off. <laughs> After Wouldn't you? Mind. Yeah, that's why I tell you to keep yeah. to shut up about it. No, because I I hear if I say his name enough times, like it'll summon him like Bloody Mary through the mirror. He'll, he might hit, he might hit me. Candyman. Yes. All that nonsense. Or Bloody Mary. Or Bloody Mary. Yeah, it was so disturbing. Like uh, I only met him a couple of times, but we we hung out in San Diego, and you know I loved the guy. Like he was yeah. fantastic, he's and guy. that's why I wanted to had a great time. And yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so it's, it's I, but I think yeah. he's taking the safer route. I mean, right now. The climate for him is just, he can't really say anything. He's never going to be able to. I don't know, yeah, comic, comic yeah, people do not know, have a long memory. That is true. Comics people forgive yeah. far too easily in for a lot sure. of cases. Y'all so. Yeah, we can name some names. Recently, yeah. people who... Dick picks? Not dick pics, because he hasn't done anything for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but someone else who we discussed has got dick picks, a lot of new books coming out. Speaking of dick pics, that was the other question we were obligated <laughs> to ask. No, I'm not obligated to ask this I'm question. I'm obligated to ask this question. How big is your dick? It's six and three quarter inches. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. I had a yeah. feeling that you would have it measured and ready. Oh, yeah. He no, was hoping absolutely. you were going to whip it out. I wasn't I did a, Well, I did a thing years ago... Um, when I was promoting a comic in like 2000, Prison Funnies. Prison Funnies. Well, hey, didn't you tell me in our interview way back that you were going to be working on putting that out again? Just reprinting it? Oh, yeah. I keep debating that. Honestly, but, uh, I think you... I, really I want to know what in, was involved in the marketing. This was an information okay, piece that was needed. You be quiet. This is my marketing brain on. Okay, so I did a thing called um, uh, Chip Zdarsky's Naked News where what I did, uh, there was a section of my website where uh, because it was all stills, because it, video was not really readily available at the time. Um, it was me reading the news, and you click uh, next, and we go to another image of me, and I was like slowly undoing a shirt. <laughs> so Is like this still you get available? Are there archives of this? I don't know. It's the internet, but the um, <laughs> She's got her phone. I got to like the the fifth one or whatever, and I'm like down to here. Uh, and then you click the sixth one. It was just a close up of my penis and testicles. Yeah. Yeah, I and uh, I'm glad you remember yeah, that. It got, no, got, I got me some, it got me some I notoriety back in like 2000, 2001, uh, and then Naked News tried to sue me, or they really? sent me a cease. And, they sent me a cease and desist, saying that they own the right to stripping uh, while reading the news. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> that like the idea the they have that's their idea, so I can't do it. So I just, I didn't take it down at the time anyways. I just changed it to Chip Starsky's Sexy News Bulletin and just kept now, it the same. What, going back to... No, I mean, like... No, what's I, the, what's the, she, you look it up. What, what's the debate in your if mind? If you really want to see a flaccid white penis with... Circumcised or not? Circumcised. It was Crazy Bush. Then you can keep searching, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's and worth your honestly, time. Honestly, it's going to be more hard. effort than it would to find that. It's the internet. You can find very similar things. There's a picture of Chips yeah. and with multiple either chopsticks or cigarettes in his face. I can't tell which. Um, what's the debate in your mind about prison funnies? Why, what's stopping you? Or This is the one? first image that comes up, so uh, there's that. Oh, yeah, yeah. My watchman Amos. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's always hard looking at old work because uh. it, uh, it doesn't look nice. There's that, that. and like the senses of humor has changed, and kind of um, some of the things I put in there. Some are still funny, some are not. Some are maybe too offensive. Some are maybe not offensive enough. Like it, 
like I've changed, everything's changed. It's right. it's really it's hard to wrap my mind around seeing that stuff uh, spread around. So it's it's more. You're for laughing. You, Why are you laughing? She's looking at. I found fan art of your Garfield outfit. By the way, where'd you get that kigu? It's super on point. Get, where did I get the what? The Kigurumi. Your, your Garfield pajamas. Oh, um, that arrived at the newspaper I worked at anonymously one day. It was just in my chair. It was made out to me. And I immediately opened it. I put it on in the newsroom. And it was like at that moment that like diplomats were coming through. And so I greeted all these like diplomats dressed as and Garfield. like, we'd like you to meet Steve. Mar you're like, I'm his evil twin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I searched high and low trying to find out who had sent that. It took me... Like seven months until somebody finally admitted that they got drunk one night and ordered it and sent it to me. But it's like, yeah, it because stinks right now because I've worn it. You wear it to like all your big. I've worn it to a few things, but the the one like we had our our launch party at a sex club in town. That photo shoot. That's that was my first like welcome image to you. Is you like prowling seductively across a bed as Garfield? Mm, yeah. That was my good. Y boner was diamonds. That was just a great night. The uh, yeah, but that sex club. Uh, it was jam packed full of people, and it was so hot, and I refused to take off that Garfield outfit. So, by the end of the night, like when everyone had left, I stripped out of it and jumped into the hot tub at the sex club, which was kind of lukewarm, which is just not a good idea because I was like, oh, like the germs will be killed by all the heat, but, there's, but it's not did, hot. Did you get so, ass shingles? Is that, is that where this comes from? You can't catch ass shingles. Well, I guess you can. <laughs> you haven't tried hard enough. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, um, yeah, so that Garfield suit smells a little bit like the bleach that they use there and my sweat and the sweat of others. You can probably sell it on eBay for so much money. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure Riley would, like, dump out his both Riley his would live. Riley problems. would live in it. He would just roll around <laughs> on it like a cat. Oh, I love Riley. Riley yeah, he's, he's actually good. in the back room right now. Yeah, oh, is he? There cause, because after we do the podcast every week, they go to Applebee's. We go get drunk and eat wings. Really? Yeah, like, I, this is not a joke. They go to Applebee's. That's a mile and a half from here. I have not been to Applebee's since the Applebee's thing happened. Oh, right. Can, Can you, I talk about that wait, a little wait, bit? Wait, didn't you sure. have lunch with the mayor? No, I got the offer, but I turned it down. Ah. Um, because it would, would have taken an entire day because I'd have to go back to my hometown and have right. a right. meal with a guy I don't know. Which sounds he's horrible. He's in politics, by the way. Yeah, he's in politics. <laughs> and good. at an Applebee's. I, I, well, see, you, oh, whatever. I'm not going to go there about you having meals with strange men. We're just not going to. Um, Listen, food's food. Dude. Food's food. Food is food. But Free food tastes meals better. Meals with politicians are hard to finish. Which mean? <laughs> just, I grew up around what, politics. What, was he going to Michael Lewinsky the man? No, I just mean you, you sit there talking to them and it's, it's either just... Uh, glad handing and slogans in conversation, or it's them trying to figure out how they can use you. Have you ever been glad handed? It's great. It is. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I, I had uh, my father worked in New York politics. Uh, my bar mitzvah was full of politicians. Glad. Oh, hey, there I you go. Man oh that my day. god. Nice. Um, yeah, selfie this. <laughs> what are you doing? Me selfie the rest. Oh my god. You know you can meet him at a convention. Um. No duck face. Kelly Sue will be very disappointed. Trademark Kelly Sue. <laughs> yeah, trademark Kelly Sue. There we go. Um, that was this is this is actually somewhat of a hard hitting question, but I assume I can ask you. Okay, um. Matt pretty much left Marvel. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't say he burnt the bridge, but he doesn't have any. No, no, no. He didn't. Bridge. He didn't burn any bridges right, at all. Right, but he just he was he's done. It but, seems that way. Yeah, right. I'm saying from from. I would assume that when he's he allegedly got, done. Right. He, I'm not allegedly. saying he's like. Fuck all them, or whatever. I'm just saying, yeah. he's, he's done. You're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to go work for Marvel. That just yeah. was like, oh, have fun. He hasn't talked to me since. <laughs> he just sends the scripts and that's it, right? No, no, like, he had nothing but good things to say. He's just I like, mean, Kelly Sue's still there, so obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, you know, he's like, at its best, Marvel is the greatest place to work at, like. Or it could be Fear Itself. You see the fear? <laughs> he never, he never meant fear? the fear itself. I said fear itself, oh, which is... same thing. Yeah. No, I was like, what was that? was his first big project he did for them. Yeah, well, no, no. I mean, no, that was like his last big project. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, the, uh, you know, Matt had the kind of, the kind of perfect templated Marvel career. You know, he came in at the kind of like Punisher War Journal. Right, he was right, right. kind of doing the, the, the stuff that maybe not everyone was jumping at. 
and then you kind of get your Iron Man, which is a yeah, that's good solid. character. You but then the it, entire run here in a set. Yeah, yeah, and then it took off even more because then the movie came out, right? So it became this bigger thing. Uh, then you kind of get the weird holy grail that is X-Men, which kind of comes with its own challenges. I can't, I can't even imagine what that's like. Um, my, and, favorite, my favorite thing that Matt did for, for Marvel would have to be FF. With all yeah, the yeah. With all, and Joe. Yeah, Joe that's fantastic. That was just... Just, and even just, just reading his research on Twitter before the books ever came out, as he was rereading mm. the original issues, like, yeah, yeah, it's just a great super, sensibility. Super into it. So yeah, so the, the X-Men thing, and then it kind of leads to the big, they finally give him the big you know, crossover, the fear itself, and, and then he kind of, after that, it was like Hawkeye and FF, right. and he kind of started doing kind of my understanding his, is own, his own takes on things, probably without the giant pressure of an right. X Men. That or, fear uh, itself led to led to doing, you know, Hawkeye how he wanted to do it. Yeah, because nobody was like saying, "Oh, Hawkeye has to fit this mold, and right. we have to do this with Hawkeye." So he was able to do what he wanted, and it turned out to be Marvel's biggest hit in years. On um, that note, in Hawkeye, there's a lot of uh, PG thirteening, uh, mean uh, or like censoring, but instead of the art avoiding showing things they have the little Hawkeye heads. Yeah, yeah, that's that, fun. Are you yeah, are you gonna be doing that with Howard to bring him back to his dirtier roots a little bit? Or is it gonna be more standard fare? Um I was trying to think through the first couple issues. Is there anything there's nothing super dirty. There's some weird stuff. Well that, like I don't I don't think it needs to be like the th the thing is like you know when you think of like the the Gene Colan breasts like that's those are Bill Mantlo issues. Yeah. I don't think Gerber yeah. really went to no I don't, Gerber power. didn't go, but that was like they took it when they took Gerber when they took over from Gerber. It was just look, he's dirty and filthy. It, it's 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 yeah, air yeah. pirates. It was the air and, pirates Donald Duck pretty much. And I I, I don't have that. I think also because my instinct is if I'm putting him more firmly in the Marvel universe, then I want to make it more accessible. Uh, like I don't want it to be an eighteen plus book. Well, I mean, my, Marvel doesn't want it to be an eighteen plus book either. Um, so, I yeah. always assumed. I mean, this is this is really just guesswork. That part of the private investigator thing would was a slight nod towards Alias, which was a more mature book. Um, that's I I, no, I never even considered that. I think there, there's been a bunch of different kind of private eye. Oh, there's been tons. Takes. There's been tons. In just the Marvel Universe, yeah. But Alias Howard's, never crossed my mind. Right, no, it was for me, it was, it was literally just in my own head. I'm not, like, pitching it to people that way. It's yeah. an alias with a duck! The reason <laughs> I did it was because of the drawing Chris Samney did of Howard. Oh, with the, yeah. With he the, did, like, kind of a private eye like, thing, and he called him, like, he's like Elliot Gould from the 70s, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that's the pitch. Like, Howard is a P.I., so I owe Chris Sandy a lot of money, I think. <laughs> well, my question is, Howard is a P.I. I mean, like, my, again, um, I don't, I, I, it was a long time ago when I was a kid. How, like, I can't tell the different issues apart, the different incarnations, but he was always like, fuck this shit, I'm done. Like, that was constantly his refrain. He's done. Yeah. Being a private investigator is sort of the opposite of that. You keep digging. Like, yeah, yeah. So the, the question will be, like, at what point is he undone? Like snap, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, I, I, figured, I figured there was going to be that humorous tension of, like, how long can he put up with this shit, pretty much. Yeah, like, the private investigator thing is kind of like a, it's a lead-in to the series, but so little of it ends up being about private investigation. Like, one thing just kind of leads to another, and Howard's just kind of, like, trapped in these situations. In a world he never made. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Let me write that down. <laughs> well, I mean, like, it was really funny because I, I wanted to do, just do quick research to remind myself of a few things, and I constantly saw that, like, any article about Howard the Duck, the character who was tra trapped in the world. And I feel like people seem to, a lot of people writing nowadays seem to have missed the point that, that they were making fun of that concept. Yeah, they yeah. Were not, it wasn't about him not fitting in. It was about the fact that, no, does anyone fit in anywhere, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Howard was like... There is like, so much happening here. Oh, she's back to sex criminals. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, like, the beauty of Howard is just the fact that, like, he's the most normal person in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Like, he's the person that kind of reflects the reader and has, like, common sense and, like, you know, him running for president for the all-night party. It's right. just like, you know, just like, why do we let this stuff happen? You know? Yeah, this is just ridiculous. This is... Yeah. Yeah, so I've always loved the idea that, like, he's... 
like this weird stranger and this world is too crazy around him but like <laughs> no it's like yeah no it's it, well it is true it's it's uh if you were transported to the marvel universe how the fuck would you deal with that man you can't yeah, walk yeah. down the street in manhattan without 20 superheroes swinging yeah exactly past. yeah so i kind of like the fact that he's like yeah, he's a walking talking duck but he's in this crazy city where that's not even an issue right well did, yeah. did marvel also Totally, this is just popped away. Did Marvel insist on pants for the whole? Yeah, run? oh yeah, yeah. Immediately, pants, like I got the, um, I got all the legal documents from like I guess the eighties when right. uh, Disney threatened Marvel, um, and it states like the the colors of things right. that they have to be and the pants and yeah. one of the more bizarre lawsuits. That yeah, said, yeah. I don't even know if it got to the lawsuit phase. What I'm saying, just yeah, like legal action. Or whatever yeah, it and it's so funny that it's still uh, it's still a part of it, even though Disney owns Marvel. <laughs> well, that's hey, listen, Disney might own Marvel, but IDW is putting out the new Disney comics. Yeah. So who like who knows what all sort of weird stuff goes on? Those are are they are they is new? Self insert. Are What's you that? the crazy man in the food court? Yeah, that's me. He's yeah, because I kept basing characters on friends and stuff. I'm like, I gotta make one about me. Oh, like you're literally like the crazy food court chicken grandpa. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> She's not turned the page yet and found out what yeah. his career is. That's amazing. Yeah. Food court chicken grandpa is probably the name that's... of this episode. Yes. Yeah. Food court chicken grandpa. Yeah, 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 that's good. I did it. I did it. I got the episode name. <laughs> good job. Uh, good job. Um, I just think I, it's just so to me personally. I mean, I remember um, when that Howard series went out. It came out like eight years ago, like four issue. Yeah, yeah. Where they tried to bring him back, and everyone just rolled their eyes. Yeah, I haven't even I haven't revisited those ones. Yeah, and I don't even like that's where Howard the Duck stands in most people's mind. It's like, oh yeah, Howard the Duck, he existed, past tense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like that's a big challenge, isn't that? Um, I guess so. Like, I don't care about anything in my life. So yeah. I don't really see these things as like challenges. Like I don't have to like, I don't have to yeah, make this. Some of us success. have to sell these fucking books, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if it works and you sell them, it's great. If it doesn't, you don't. Then I don't know. Well, I just go back to sex. Are, some of us are ordering heavily, hoping that it's a good book. It, I like it. But can, I'm happy can you just put Spider Gwen in it so I can sell more? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, first issue's got Spider Man. Sorry. Yeah, he's not as cool. Do you want to <laughs> No, I mean, you, you did not go through You yesterday. are using women to pander. You did not. You are, you are the patriarch. You stuck the shit. <laughs> you did not see yesterday's comic world explosion over Spider-Man. Oh, I can't even imagine comics pandering to anyone. Oh, never. That's insane. I know. That's, that's like, literally like all games. comics are. That's all Marvel and DC is. Speaking of video games, Chip. How many Batman and X-Men comics do people need? It's like total well, pander. Thank you. Thank you. What it's called, you? It's, a, it's a business. A but Chip, what are your These top are... five video games? What's that? What are your top five video games? Uh, I don't get to play them anymore. Um, so I'm, I'm totally out of it. Uh, I enjoyed the Batman games. The I one. enjoyed Assassin's Creed games. I like the ones where you're kind of removed from the character and you follow the character around the city. So you like being like a warrior or like a little stalker? Yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, whenever I try, like, a first person, I'm just like, nope, not for me. I don't like being somebody. Like, <laughs> I like controlling somebody. I don't like being somebody. You but my like girl, playing God. My girlfriend, for my birthday, she bought me an old Nintendo, and we finally hooked it up last night, and we're playing, like... The classic Mario. Yeah, yeah, like Mario Death 2 and Mario 3, and it's like, it's... I instantly got Nintendo thumb, it was like... Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. <laughs> no, it's... it's crazy. I, I, whatever. I'm not a game person. I at have all. perpetual Nintendo thumb. Yeah, I know. You're playing games four hours a day. I don't even understand where you get the time. I don't sleep. I, there I we go. That would be. I subsist comes. on caffeine and nicotine. That's all I live on. You know this. I do know this actually. Um, sorry. Um, I, 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 that was that that video game thing totally derailed me. Um, Good job. Turns out I love cocaine. Turns out I love cocaine. Yeah. Oh, you're up to this issue. That was, by the way, that was that was ballsy, to the Jasmine saying cocaine issue. Oh, it was tons of fun. Like, yeah, no, I mean like like we knew we were gonna eventually get to her story, and uh, yeah, it was. It was and also, that cliffhanger you end the book on is insane. That's <laughs> yeah. like, 
I mean, seriously, the, 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 like I said, issue six and seven had this real rocky start where it got super dark. Yeah. And, and then eight, you balance it a lot. And then nine and 10 are like, their issues three and four in insanity. But so much more has happened that they're like, yeah, we're really, we're really teeing up the next arc. The, uh, which I hope you do know you're going to have to write, right? It's not like the second arc where you were shocked. Well, like I'm, I'm already, I'm almost done drawing issue eleven, and uh, Matt's totally setting up like an Ocean's Eleven style sex criminals thing. Which that's is pretty much what I'm seeing, like right here. Yeah. Like, Fantastic. Well, that's, I mean, and that's something we will get to now on the TV end. This weird TV quasi deal. I mean, right now my understanding is it's just there's going to be an attempt to put something together to bring sex criminals to television. Is that pretty? Much no, right? no, though it's, uh, it's. Uh, beyond that, like the idea was Matt and Kelly Sue signed a deal with Universal to, I believe, produce two pilots each, like like to write two pilots each over the period of a couple of years, like oh, as like employees of Universal kind of, right. like their company. And so the one is Sex Criminals. Oh, just straight off. That is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they purchased the option to Sex Criminals. Right, no, no, part, I, I heard that part. Of part of the deal, and so... One of the two scripts Matt uh, is delivering to them is Sex Criminals. Got it. For, for I, the pilot. Yeah, the way Deadline read was sort of like, Sex Criminals is coming TV. And then it's like, oh, yeah. and uh, they, they made this production company and they are going to be writing original stuff. And Sex Criminals is one of those things. And I was like, I'm yeah. not positive what I'm seeing here. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think a lot of the deal kind of uh, hinged on Sex Criminals. That's, that was my thinking when I read Yeah, it. yeah. Um, uh, she's see, she, she's not. She keeps saying she's going to read Wicked and Divine, so she's not even getting half the awesome. Okay. That's still an amazing name. So, I can appreciate Clint Eastwood as a porn name. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. works without. Yeah, working. that. Yeah, I just meant the other stuff going on yeah. in there. So yeah, so it's the kind of thing where like there will be a pilot script, and they want to make a TV show. Is this some David Bowie? And Bullshit? they've hired them expressly for this purpose. Uh, so yeah, like I'd imagine at the very least what'll happen is that the, the, there'll be a pilot made. But we, you, you guys don't have like budgeting or any of that set up. Like the no. whole thing could be like strobe lights with streamers for the, I mean, for all I know, there's budgeting happening. Right. Like I'm not, uh, well, are you, are you signed onto this deal with any sort of creative control or input? Myself? No. Yeah, no. So Everything no. could look totally different than the way you drew it, and you can't even say anything, pretty much? I could say right, stuff. Right, I'm saying they... you don't have legal recourse. Oh, God, the word Verolita. No one has legal there's recourse. I don't think there's any such thing as a deal unless we were actual producers on it, and even then, I don't think. Um, but, like, the fact that Matt's writing the script uh, is right, huge. Right. Is huge. Like, yeah. Like, so at least that aspect will definitely be our vision. And I don't think they'd want to upset Matt or myself by making it something totally different. Hey, listen. And they, 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 they purchase it because they like it. Um, I, some things work better on screen than they do in a comic, so I, I wouldn't be upset. I don't have the kind of... Uh, um, uh, I don't have the kind of feeling of like, oh, this has got to be, you know... Right reflective of the comic it could be totally different from the comic and it does not affect me at all right, like no, the comic's that. the comic and that's the thing i work on so i'm i'm totally happy just doing that i just and I'll, thinking... I'll contribute where i can to this if they want me to uh, uh, I write stuff pay, or do play, background uh, the things. food court chicken guy uh, yeah exactly <laughs> food court um... grandpa or whatever Crazy mall food court chicken grandpa um oh, yeah. but I, I keep thinking of you know uh preacher yeah. is coming to AMC, and uh, I was really excited, a very strange way to see uh, Seth Rogen tweeted this picture, and it says, gone to TV, uh, 23 things that must change if Preacher's on TV by Garth Ennis. And he's yeah. like, just received my first notes. Awesome. Yeah. And I was like, thank God Garth Ennis is the one writing those notes. Yeah. You yeah. know, because it's true, you can't do a whole bunch of stuff that was in Preacher on TV, not not because of ratings, or just because just of pacing and movement. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, a, it's a different animal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, um, but I also don't have the emotional uh, investment in it to be like, right. oh, You're not this has be to be sitting perfect. Sitting in on casting. 
What's that? You're not going to be sitting in on casting. Oh, my casting coach? Yeah. You're going like, yeah, yeah. to be like, hey, you, you want to be Susie? Hey, you want to be John? Yeah. You just come together and you just do some stuff right now. <laughs> I can see how, how realistic it's going to be, how much it fits our characters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like I'm, I'm excited. But the, the, the funny thing, too, is like, you know, we signed these deals like months ago. Right. And it was just announced yesterday. So I've kind of just forgotten it. Like I just worked <laughs> on the book and doing other things. And then like I was actually just walking down the street yesterday to go sign copies of Sex Criminals. And my girlfriend texted me and she's like, oh, I didn't know the news was going to break today. I'm like, what? What so I had to like check my email. Like, oh, hey, yeah, everyone knows. That's it's weird. A top hat. I it has a top hat. Oh, you yeah, never that adorable? the dick pic no, like that? No, no, real talk. It reminds me of that really awful, which is the last thing I actually want to discuss. It reminds me of that really awful furry comic with all oh, it thinks it's peoples. There's a there's a fucking picture with a fucking like duck vibrator and it has a little top hat. And they're like, oh, it's so cute. It thinks it's peoples. Speaking of which, uh-huh. speaking yeah. of which, furries. Yeah. How do you feel about featheries? How do you feel about people who actually, you know, Drive sexual pleasure from Howard the Duck. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> the man How dresses you know like Garfield in a sex club. How do you you're, feel you're never going to get judgment for me to a fetish that does not uh, harm anyone. I like that. That's like, it's just like, sure, whatever. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, didn't, I really was wondering are you, what you are thought you, you were going to no, get. No, are you down that. to yif is the real question. Am I down to what? Sorry, madam? I'm sorry, <laughs> miss? We might have a new time. She asked if you are down to yif. Um, I do not know what yif is, so you'll have to explain that to yif me. Yif is furry sex. It is they, they use the term is coined off of the sound foxes make when they're banging. Oh, yiffing. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm down to yif. I'm down to pretty much anything. There's not a lot that I wouldn't do. I don't think. Can I sexually? Now, this is something that I was debating bringing up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Going to. I'm going to bring this up. Brimpers. Hmm. Why brimping? Why is that of all the sexual terms that you guys made up? Because honestly, I, I'll, be, I'll be brimping is the penis in the hair in the first issue. Oh Sarah right! Yeah, but yeah. there were a bunch of them with, in my opinion, better names. Like how oh, do you yeah, become yeah. brimpers? Brimping is a great name. No, it's, it's, brimping it's, is a great name. But every letters column, which I love reading, by the way, going hey brimpers, I, just, I don't know. I don't. The term doesn't work for me. That's why I don't know um, Brimper's t-shirt. It's not all about you, you It fuck. is all about it's me. Not, you... Sorry. It's totally out of our hands. Like, that that thing just kind of became its own thing. Like, right, people that's... just started calling themselves Brimpers without us prompting it, and we're just like, all right, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. I mean, the other terms are like, well, like, chocolate McKittening. Yeah, you yeah. can't really do that. Well, I always assumed it was going to be, you know, sex criminal fans were going to be sex criminals. That's the problem. Right? See, I think that was the, the that was the debate but <laughs> amongst people on Tumblr. They were just like, "We can't call ourselves sex criminals. Can't call Can ourselves." We? Why not? Imagine, just imagine that pink brimper shirt, but it says it says, "I'm a," and then it has the sex criminal logo. That I would get. We'd sell. You'd sell zillions. Dozens. Zillions. <laughs> You'd sell as many as you sold of the brimper shirt because it's the it's the quality of the story. <laughs> Oh, sure. True, but Brimper, you can you can basically if somebody asks you about it, you can say, "Oh, it's a band." <laughs> oh, you, can, you know you can your readers. It. You Sex know your readers start are a like, "Hold on, this is Brimper." You know that they're doing yeah, it yeah. when someone asks. They're not yeah. embarrassingly going, "Is this a thing?" Whatever. Don't don't worry about it. I'm I'm the guy that created it, and I say it's a band. <laughs> if I'm walking well, down the street. Someone Canada, asks me. It's it's totally different there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highly illegal. Yeah, I mean, brimp- I actually heard blimping is illegal in like, 12 states, and they're trying to pass it in 10 more, because yeah, you guys yeah. just started an epidemic. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. I saw it's just st- hygienically the, just dangerous. The problem is the lube in the hair. Right. That's always the, that's gotta, always the issue. Yeah. It's why I don't have is anymore. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, it's, it's rough. It's rough. Shit does not condition your hair as well as you might think. No. Well, it's I, not moisturizing at all. Something, uh... Something about Mary taught me that. No, that but, was... That no, it was, wasn't lube, but... I, oh, okay, I... Th- all right. Let me explain oh, to you. God. Jizz and lube are not the same thing. I, yeah, I'm... <laughs> you thank have, you, you, thank you. Three children, you just, you should you just know changed this. my life. I no longer... That's the problem. Every time you went to use lube, closet. it was no. jizz, and she got no, pregnant next, again. Sh- next New Year's list we're doing is like top ten things you should not use as lubricant. Yeah. That, yeah, you remember that by New Year's. I will. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's literally why you have three children. You keep <laughs> using jizz as lubricant. There are a lot of reasons I have three children. Very few of them are good. 
Oh, wow. I'm just going to keep drinking. Yeah, you just keep drinking. I obviously did enough drinking. Um, you now, do you, you have anything drink. else in the line? Like, I mean, I can't imagine... Like you said, you, plenty of deals you signed. I mean, you signed the Howard deal months before it was made public. Signed a deal. I don't know. We, I, Whatever the term is. Well, it, the funny thing with that is, like, I didn't... At no point did I actually think that I had the job. Like, like this, this back and forth with an editor, which I give some ideas, and he likes them, and he asks me what kind of artists I want. And I, we talk through artists, and I start writing a script, and he asks me to do a cover, and I do a cover, and I'm like, at no point does anyone say you've got the job. Until you get your deadlines in uh, three weeks. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. And then they announce, I'm like, oh, hey, okay, there we go. Because I've heard stories in comics, so maybe not as much Marvel as DC, where people would work on a project for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then not realize there was somebody else working on the same project over here. I forgot. I was an artist was just talking about it, like, a couple months ago. How he did, like, uh, loose pencils of a whole issue, and then he started tightening up. He was, like, ten pages in when it was announced that someone else was working on that title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, it think... was, and he's like, but I have the script right here. I've been drawing the book. Oh, I guess I didn't get it. Yeah. But so, so yeah, you, it's, it's is that your answer where, that you could have like four more books coming out that you're not even aware of yet? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? No, this is it for me. I don't uh, uh, workload wise. Like I'm writing the two books and drawing sex criminals, and uh, and there's so much more that kind of surrounds it. Like like with sex criminals, like we're putting up a hardcover, and so yes. Yes. The past few days I've been dealing with like printer issues and gold foil versus gold ink and and there's all this like production stuff that kind of goes well, along. Well, I mean with that's that's what goes with being being Oh no, they brought the Quentin Tarantino foot fetish. I'm so glad someone else is talking about this. You're like in another world. Tonight. No, no. <laughs> you don't understand. Colin introduced me the whole Quentin Tarantino likes to suck toes while jerking off thing and like the fact that it came back to me, I'm like See? They get Once you. again, Sex I don't judge. Gets you. It does. It speaks to me at like a spiritual level. Yeah. My first uh, erotic experience was with, with a toe sucker. It was amazing. Wait, it was like... You were sucking their toes? They were sucking yours? Like, what they were about? sucking my... Uh, so it was like... I was like 16... And I went camping with a bunch of friends, but they were all like kind of big football player guys, and I was like the weird little dude. And then uh, one of the dude's older brothers showed up with his uh, his wife, and she was like this ex ballet dancer who worked at the Molson's factory, so she was very cool. And uh, clearly, I think because I was the odd man out, she kind of took a shining to me, and like she was in the water, and I was just kind of sitting there doing some doodles. And uh, she she said something about like toes, and I'm like, "What what do you mean toes?" She's like, "Oh, you don't know toes are like super erogenous." I'm like, oh, "I don't know, because like I've never done anything." Like, "Oh yeah, totally." And she kind of she came out of the water and she started sucking my toes, and How like did that my make you feel erect, like uh, insanely erect. Like it felt so amazing. But to be fair, and then, you've never like, been a sixteen year old boy. It's I've like, had my toes. Being erect I've, is like two I've been no, of your life. I've been shrimp before. Okay, I understand. I do. Yeah, but so yeah, and so like I don't know where her husband was, and then the uh, like later that night when everyone was like super wasted, like we just kept skipping off into the woods and making out. And, like she was like the first woman I made out with. She was like thirty six, and I you. was like sixteen, and like she invited me back to their cabin. I was like, am I going to, like, have sex tonight with this woman and her husband? Like, what's going on? And then my buddy stumbled out of the woods, and he was, like, wasted, and he couldn't find his way back to camp, so I had to, like, bring him back to camp, and I missed out on... I missed out on that. But, yeah, I was like... And at that moment, it was like, that is, boom, my my new fetish. Sucking toes, having your toes sucked. This is amazing material for me. You do realize that, I know. You're very happy. Okay, so my, my major in school was sec like psychology, particularly of the sexual variety, so you've just given me so much to think about. That's like, that story is going to keep me awake at night. Toes, for all toes the right are the reasons. best. Toes are the best. Yeah. yeah. yeah I just, I, 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 uh, wow, we always get into the weirdest places here. We go uh, some dark places what? in this. It's not yeah, dark really at all. It's life affirming. It's the best. Yeah. No, no. How was that dark? I, I wasn't going to say dark. We just, interesting. We go interesting places. Yeah. yeah. Um, now this Do you like having your toes sucked? Do you like having your toes sucked? A little bit? Yeah, and you? Nah. You've never no? had it done, you fucking little vanilla you bitch. You don't know that. Just because Has I it? don't... Do, I'm not getting anything No, else. you're being defensive, which means you haven't. But no, no, no. But I, Chip, I, I, but Chip, I, I, do okay. you eat the ass? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, good. There we go. Yeah, you so, got yeah, it. That was you like you said when we were announcing it was gonna be your first question. The no, corkscrew penis I, distracted uh, I mean, you. Uh, if you're a modern, if you're anything like a modern man, you you you, you got to pay ass. attention to everything. If you're like a modern man, you do whatever you do. No, you yeah. eat ass. You like that's it. that's a thing now. Yeah. 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 We just yeah. all the cool kids are doing it. It's been my thing for like a decade. Oh, <laughs> well, you were doing it before. I, no, I, I'm an old man. I'm an old food court grandpa. I the ass eating movement. Yeah. Yeah. Ass first. Face ass down, first. ass up. But sure. um, the obligatory question, obviously, which we haven't hit on, which we're going to start wrapping no, up. No, we but... just talked about ass eating. Yeah, yeah no, that was important. For, for comic interviews, is what you're reading now, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. I'm not. I'm so behind on everything. Right. It's no, that's the answer. Really that... bad. It's really bad. The um, I still have to read the last issue of Hawkeye. Well, we also have to read the last issue of Hawkeye. I mean, the one that just came oh. out. <laughs> um, yeah. What am I? I'm I'm trying, trying to catch up on Marvel stuff just so I can kind of understand what I can use and what I can't use. See, that's interesting because I. Uh, uh, th- it's it's very um, it's just a weird story. I uh, at the end of the year we were having a big clearance sale and I put a box together and I sent it out to Dave Sim who I know. Yeah. And just I was like, this is just sort of the state of the comic market because you're working on this book for IDW just to get you the idea of what's out there. And he's like, ain't nobody got time for that. He wrote me back, ain't nobody got time for that. I I, I gave it to a friend. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it must be nice to exist totally in a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, no, like, I, I envy him. But but I but I would probably be in a vacuum. Like when, um, I think I think my comic collecting went through phases that I think a lot of people go through. Where as a kid I was like a huge Marvel guy, but at DC, and then when I became a teenager, it was Vertigo oh, yeah. all the way. I had my trench coat and my weird uh, early '90s mullet. What's that? Were you a flasher? No, Hellblazer. He or said a trench coat. That's... Yeah, Hellblazer, or as or as you call it. I've, I've flashed, but the uh, <laughs> and then once I hit college, I didn't have any money, so I stopped collecting. Well, and then after that, I bad comic shop. But I, I told them, "What do you have by Neil Gaiman?" Because I really love Sandman. And the guy goes, "Oh, one of those." Um, yeah, there you and go. And I was like, "Yeah." And I left, and now I own a comic shop where I try to never say anything like that ever. Yeah, yeah. When the, do- when the doors are open. Yeah, when the doors so, so after college, I, I started to get into kind of more kind of fanographic stuff, and um, you strike me as a Jodorowsky guy, Incal, and that sort of stuff, Mobius. A, a little bit, a little bit, yeah, yeah. I mostly look at the pretty pictures, but the um, uh, but then I just I, I'd say for the last like. 15 years I kind of became like a fantasy football guy for comics like I knew everything about comics I would read all the comic sites and I knew all the creators all the players all the storylines that were happening but I never read the comics well did you go into comics. comic shops and talk about them and then not buy anything no I went in and flashed no. them okay good because those no. people those people the fantasy football comic fans who come here and buy absolutely nothing yeah that's the worst and talk about everything so this yeah. is happening and I hear someone's taking over Iron Man I'm like that's the worst. So, so, <laughs> so after, I mean, when, like, I, I bought, bought a few stuff, a, a few things in the past 10 years, and math stuff uh, was included, and so when we decided to do Sex Criminals, I kind of made myself go to the comic shop and pick up uh, different books, kind of more based on art, to see what's happening right, with the art. Right, yeah, see what the movement is. Yeah, yeah, and so, you know... Uh, Chris Samney stuff on Daredevil is stunning, and I would uh, carve out his skeleton and climb inside of his skin just to inhabit that talent. Maybe I hear that. Did I you mean, lotion we... him first? No, no. Going no and lotion. dry. Going and dry. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to taint anything. Are you reading the new Stray Bullet stuff? Because I know we talked about Stray Bullets in our. Oh yeah, yeah. Time. No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't picked up the new stuff, um, but I studied a lot of Stray Bullets. Right. Because we were doing sex criminals on the eight panel grid, right, which right. is a very awkward grid uh, to uh, get dialogue into, and I, it's, it's actually astounding. There's certain there's certain paneling moments in sex criminals that I cannot believe two people worked on it. Like that's it's a writer artist sort of move on some of some of those things are just so perfect. Like no one else could have done it. Poignant. No, it's in the paneling and the words and making the match. You usually don't see. There's a few, especially no, like I know uh, there's a lot of dissonance. the the Lolita scene where he, you know, 
Yeah, uh, that, that page, Matt, that page. said, uh, hey, this is your Eisner page. Go for yeah, it. This yeah, is you I mean, being Eisner. Um, and it's nice because we do stick to such a strict grid right. that when we do something like that, it kind of makes it a bit more special. But yeah, Stray Bullets is all eight panel, uh, eight grid. I'm really, I'm slowly, thanks to him coming back, I'm slowly trying to get a lot of people on board on that. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's like, I think Ron Richards at Image yeah. uh, it was heavily involved with getting Lapham. I could see that, yeah. Yeah, because he was, he was in here right before the announcement, and he was like, we've got a really cool announcement, I'll tell, I can't tell you about it. And then they announced it, I'm like, I, I messaged him, like, Ron, was, that, was, this, was this it? He goes, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> But, you could just uh, say that, yes at the that new, point. The new one, uh, which is in trade now, the first miniseries, Killers, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you yeah, know, sometimes yeah. someone comes back to a series after that kind of hiatus and you're like, what's it going to be? Boom, right from the get-go. It's yeah. just, it's perfect stray bullets. I, 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 yeah. know, I don't know why I'm pushing this on you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's stuff amazing. And are you getting Marvel comp boxes now? Do they still do that? No, I mean, I when I... Signed on with Marvel, I got the Marvel Unlimited thing for my iPad, wow. so I could kind of go through old issues of things, and like it makes it much easier to. Uh, oh, yeah, it makes to, no. To do right. research, and I understand, like you know, yeah. doesn't help the comic stores. Bottom line, yeah. but um, You'd be but it, but it actually inspires, like, yeah. inspires me to go out and buy stuff in collections. Exactly, no, and, and stuff. stuff that and stuff that. Um, there's, they do a lot of things on the Marvel Unlimited for upcoming stuff. Read the yeah. history first, and that gets yeah. people more excited for stuff. Yeah. No, but it's I also went right six, before, six months behind too, so I'm six right. months behind in a lot of it. Right yeah. before uh, we opened, J.M. Dematis, uh, the comic writer, basically went on Twitter and said, "I've got 40 boxes of comics that are going in the trash. They're going to the recycling yeah. center unless someone wants to pick them up." And I'm yeah. like, "I will drive to upstate New York." And I will load my store with dollar books. I wish I had known that because I would have carpooled the shit and, out of that way. Uh, and it was comp boxes. It was just comp boxes and comp boxes and comp boxes. And I'm like, these all stop in like 1998. He goes, yeah, that's yeah. what happened. They just stopped sending everyone shit. Um, well, I was uh, I shared a studio with Cameron Stewart uh, back when he was doing Catwoman. And he would get the DC comp box every month, and I think he'd pull out maybe two issues out of it, and the rest of them I just kind of like I'd read during lunch breaks. Yeah, but, um, that's but that, but that's of... it. Like they'd end up like, like all these boxes would fill the studio, and he'd have to find someone to take them away because most Is there of it. Is a we dog read. near you? Is there a dog near me? Yes. She's uh, the noise that scratching noise or whatever. Either you're scratching your junk, or there's a dog snuffling near your mic. Am I no, I'm, it, it, I'm alone in a room. I think it's his beard. It might be. This is some oh, microphone. there it is. It, yeah, your beard is assaulting your microphone. Is yeah. this the microphone? I didn't even realize that. No, it, but it wasn't really noticeable because it sounded like a dog like, was like fucking sniffing around. Um, anyway, I think we, we should wrap up. We've taken over an hour of your time. All right. And uh, we're going to put this up uh, Sunday night, early Monday morning. All right, cool. So is there any promotion for Friends Project? Any horrific print, uh, pitches you want to throw at us? Shill away. I got nothing, man. <laughs> wow, fuck all these bitches. <laughs> I well, got nothing. I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, Captara, I guess. Captara. Final, it'll that. be before Captara Final Order Cutoff, even though the orders will have gone through. So if you're interested in more Chip Starsky, you should definitely tell your store to pre order Captara. Right, I mean us. Well, the no, art, uh, we the ship? art is amazing. Yeah, no, it, I was just cloud. looking in the image. I, I, I had to. I flipped through previews while I'm going through it again, and I stopped it. He's coloring it himself, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the colors also. Yeah, There's yeah. A, we've got kind of like a bit of a because the woman who's doing flats on it, she's mm -hmm. picking some colors that are working. So we're kind of crediting her more as like color assistant on it. That's, um, that's she flats. Cool. She flats for me on sex criminals. Ah. Um, yeah, she's fantastic as oh, well. Her, I, her name's in the book. Exactly. Yeah, Becca Kinsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, she's great. But Kagan is like, he's Canada's top illustrator. He's amazing. Oh, I, I, he's he's stunning. And and my partner was uh, comrades like, so I'm not used to calling Kagan, him that. It's Kagan. Right? He, we're gonna get tons of this, right? Because it's him. And I'm like, unfortunately, I don't know if his name carries with a lot of our customers. It should. Yeah, I mean, it I mean will after your book. Be of infinite kung fu, you right, know, just put exactly. them side by side, and people will figure it out. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I'm looking forward to more people seeing his work. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the reasons that I think I think the book's going to be. 
I think there's a lot of people who are ex who don't know they know sex criminals from you. That's it. Maybe by this yeah. time since that they'll have picked up Howard. Yeah. And there, this does not seem in any way similar. To be fair, you introduced me to Chip Zdarsky via sex criminals. You're like, well, read this. The only thing he has because he won't be yeah, yeah, funny that's, back in print. That's my thing. I still can't find naked news. I'm really upset about this. <laughs> I'm sure Riley has. Oh no, you know, it's saved somewhere. No, in the shrine. problem is I know the black market of the internet, and I'm going to go on tonight, and I will get it. Yeah, no, I, I know it exists. I'll I've, find I've it. Seen it. I've There's seen a penis it. on the internet. I will find and it. And by the time um, Kaptar is out, we might have Matt's last issue of Hawkeye, finally. Yeah, yeah, I know uh, David's been working on it for a long time. Matt delivered the last four scripts, I think, forever ago. Like, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was 18 months ago or something. What the fuck? Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I'm not, I don't know David's process. All I know is the new Hawkeye, I'm assuming first issue is not rely heavily on what happens at the end of You would hope Matt. not. Yeah, I think, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, Matt's, Matt's probably leaving it open-ended for the next team, so, yeah. yeah. And, um, it's no, no one you want to shill for, no pitches you want to... No, I, I hate everyone. Me too. I, mean, I work in a comic shop, it's sort of... I fire. really hate you. Well, I like you, Chip. We Whether love you. you like me or not. I hate you oh. less than everyone else. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm cool with that. He eats the ass, he can't be a bad guy. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. All right. Thank you, this Crazy Food Court Chicken Grandpa, for joining us. And My I pleasure. hope everyone will pick up Howard the Duck March 11th. 11th. March 11th, yeah. 11th is the new drop yeah. date. And if you're in uh, Toronto, there's a party? Yeah, there's, there's a, a party. party. There's a party. Yeah, update yeah. my passport. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, check it out through uh, the Beguiling. And uh, anyone who enjoyed it. this and would like to hear us discuss ass eating more, you can find fandom on uh, Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, iTunes. And all that. Thank you very much, Chip. Uh, thank have you a good guys. night. Really, thank you for doing this. I yeah, know. no, my pleasure. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. All right. I think they're about to work. See ya. Bye.